Thank you to uh, each of our witnesses uh, for your uh, very uh, comprehensive opening statements, and I appreciate your testimony here today. I want to spend a little time focusing uh, on uh, supply chain, which is, uh, has come up repeatedly in testimony as well as in some of the uh, answers to the questions from, uh, from the chairman. So my first question is uh, to uh, Mr. Burrell. Uh, certainly this pandemic uh, has exposed our country's reliance uh, on uh, foreign countries uh, to provide critical medical supplies to us, uh, in, in particularly China, uh, which uh, manufactures critical drugs and medical supplies. In fact, uh, last year, I released a report uh, from this committee identifying vulnerabilities and called for action to address what is uh, fundamentally, an, in my mind, a national security threat, uh, given our reliance on these uh, foreign uh, entities. So my question to you, Mr. Burrell, is as the uh, former director of the uh, SNS for 13 years, what, what's your opinion uh, on our reliance on foreign suppliers uh, for critical drugs and, and medical supplies? And what steps uh, specifically would you believe that we should be taking in order to address uh, this threat? Senator, I, I am as concerned as anyone else about our over-reliance on foreign produced products. I think that this is a significant issue that we face in this particular event, but in all events as well. If something disrupts that supply chain outside the United States and we can't do anything about it domestically, we have a significantly worse issue than we would otherwise. Some of the things that I think we can do, I believe that we must encourage continued relations with the private sector in a strong, comprehensive, um, cooperative way so that we can together find the best way forward, not just for these events, but for all healthcare needs in the United States. We see drug shortages routinely, and many are impacted by the, the situation you described. Well, thank you. Uh, that, uh, Dr. Uh, Gerstein. It's the, uh, the same question uh, to you. Do you have any recommendations uh, on how the federal government can work more effectively with the private sector uh, to address uh, this national security threat? Well, I do. I mean, I think that uh, we have to make known what the requirements are going to be, uh, that the federal government, uh, in coordination with the state, local, tribal, territorial governments, sees as what will be required for a pandemic. Uh, or for any sort of event that we intend to have the SNS or whatever follows it, uh, you know, as the uh, whatever we intend to have as the uh, set of scenarios. But I guess, you know, it all comes down to really mapping this out very methodically and understanding the types of scenarios that we intend to be prepared for and building resilience and flexibility into the system. Uh, you know, this virus has been very different than, say, what we faced in the H1N1 in 2009 uh, or during uh, Ebola. And, you know, if history is any indication, we need to design it with a great deal of flexibility. So I would say that we should rely on U.S. innovation. We should uh, get with stakeholder communities, including uh, the private sector. Uh, and we need to figure out what their capacities are. In some cases, we do need to have uh, warm lines available that can be turned on very rapidly. We know if it's going to be a global pandemic, we're going to face the exact same set of circumstances with a global competition, which is unhelpful. Uh, and but it's a it's a matter of uh, you know what's going to go on for uh, other nations to try to. Uh, get supplies that they might need. So we need to be prepared and build in resilience. And it's, make no mistake though, Senator, it will cost money to prepare for this, but we have done this in other areas where we have prioritization and we should do it for global public health or for US public health as well. Very good, and, and the point about how we have to have uh, more information, I think, uh, is significant. And, and my understanding is that Asper uh, does not have uh, the information that it needs to inform planning for the strategic national stockpile or, or to sufficiently protect critical infrastructure, such as essential manufacturing plants that we may have here in this country. Uh, for example, Asper should know the location of where those manufacturing plants are for some of the active uh, ingredient, ingredients, uh, the APIs. And, and other critical drugs. Uh, I've actually introduced legislation uh, called the PART Act, which would address this by, it actually requires the FDA to share certain manufacturing data uh, with ASPR and the DOD uh, to uh, help uh, serve the drug supplies. So maybe uh, your comments on, on, on what, 
would additional information required by this part act uh, how would that help us prepare for future pandemics natural disasters as well national security threats mr burrell i'm going to ask you to comment as well but uh, first your your comments you've been uh, certainly focused on the lack of information i'd uh, love to have uh, uh, your your thoughts uh, mr gerstein dr gerstein excuse me yeah, no, I think you, you've hit it right on the head, uh, Senator. It, we need to understand in the same way that other corporations who are providing supply chain support, and I won't name them, but I think we all know who many of them are, uh, they know who their suppliers are. They know what happens and where, you know, what their lead times are and what happens if their supply chain is disrupted. So they have developed a business model that make sure that they don't ever run out of those items within the supply chain. Uh, and we need to do the same thing. We need information. You know, one of the problems that occurred, interestingly, when you had the transition from CDC to ASPR, uh, and then during this immediate uh, pandemic, uh, to FEMA providing some sort of support, an interesting outcome was that it wasn't clear that FEMA knew where all the stockages were. So they didn't have the initial understanding of what was remaining in the stockpile. You know, FEMA is good with management and logistics, but they do it for, uh, you know, their the, the sorts of supplies they typically rely on for natural disasters and such. And, you know, this is a very specialized set of requirements that is inherent in the SNS. And so not having that information is a little bit like trying to make allocations with blinders on. Well, thank you. I'm out of time now. Uh, Mr. Morell, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll get back to you to get uh, some information from you. I'd like to get your viewpoints uh, as well. But thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.